we're gonna get better with this stuff over the course of time. But even if you get all of this stuff set up to the point where we can store all this energy, where's that energy coming from? Well, right now here in the Prairie Provinces in the middle of nowhere, it's coming from fossil fuels. And the only replacement that that I've seen from research that I've done, and there might be some guys out there that'll school me on electricity and a bunch of stuff, and, and, and I respect those people. The only thing I see that coming from is nuclear energy. And uh, you're singing my tune, man. I agree with that. I like I uh, I just had a guy on that was from the uh, renewable biofuels thing, and we had an interesting conversation. He had a lot of really good points, mm -hmm. but still, nobody can compete with nuclear. It's not even close. And the danger around nuclear seems to me to be well within our parameters yeah. of the danger that we allow. Yeah, man. I, I think we really have a, a bad stigmatism with nuclear energy because everybody thinks back to the Simpsons and looks to Springfield and the, the nuclear power plant that's got smoke coming out of the stacks when they do it and a bunch of three-headed fish swimming around. Well, everybody needs to realize that nuclear energy is no longer Chernobyl or the Simpsons or any of this stuff that it used to be. It's, it, there's still going to be dangers involved with it, but there's dangers involved in every single type of energy that, that we use. But when you look at the, I mean, you guys have it in the, in the central parts of the States and everywhere along the States, but I mean, even look at your, at your rail systems that you have. I mean, locomotives are, are, are powered off of electricity. It's a diesel generator powering, powering an electric motor that drives that train because of the horsepower that you get out of electricity. These are some of the places where I feel like we should start moving towards with nuclear energy. Like how much easier, like not, I'm not saying that it's easy by any stretch of the imagination, but you have a track built on a piece of equipment that is on said track, no matter what, when they go, that's connected by iron all the way across your land. I mean, that's a place where you could be like, okay, maybe we should start looking at nuclear technology here and small modular reactors and things like that. We're starting to make moves on that kind of stuff in Canada here right now too. Um, I, I'm just, I, I'm not a guy that's against any of this stuff, but when we look at our renewables, like solar and wind power, those come at a price to our environment as well. Um, we have. Rare I was just talking with a guy who uh, who has uh, the windmills on his house, at, yeah. like in, in his yeah. property, and he was telling me that they were told when they got them put on there that they would have a thirty year time span. But he's yeah. like, we already have four or five of them that are that are done. Like they they broke yeah. it, and he's like, it is going to cost three times as much to take mm -hmm. the thing down as it costs to put it up. Absolutely. And then what do you do with it once it's down? There's a lot you of put these it in a mass grave is what they're doing. Because <laughs> there's a lot of these things that can't be recycled right now. I, I am I am not going to sit here uh, talking to anybody. I, I will no longer do it on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to sit here and call this stuff down because if I built a home uh, tomorrow on, on my place that's north of Tufnell, Saskatchewan, my five miles, I would absolutely incorporate solar energy into it because what it's going to do to, to my residents, a small residence like what I've got, is it is going to take away a load that is on the power system that I have coming in there. I can't rely on it f to live though. It's, it's 35 below here right now. And the amount of energy that I use, unfortunately, cannot be stored of, of what I need right now. We've had no wind for the last three days. And leading up to that, we had about a week where we had no sun. You, you always have to have a backup with these things. And I'm not saying that the technology is not going to get there where we can't store them in batteries or capacitors or whatever it winds up being. But we've also got to look at what makes up a solar panel and what, 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 uh, metals are used to make these windmills and everything and the life expectancy of them and the cost of them. And everybody needs to realize that no matter how hard we try as humans, if we're going to keep living how we live, we're going to emit and we are going to need natural resources. And we're unfortunately a, a little, it sounds morbid, but we're kind of a cancer on the earth. We can reduce our footprint of what we do, but I think the biggest thing that, that we have going on right now that's a huge problem in our society is that we're so polarized to either side of what we believe needs to happen to go forward with, with life. Um, I'm, I'm sick to my stomach when I hear Elizabeth May in Canada say that oil and gas is dead because I understand from rural Saskatchewan where we grow uh, a huge amount of the food that the world eats 
that it's more the world that's dead without oil and gas, not us. We're kind of going to make it if our power goes out tomorrow because we have the crops and the chickens and the cows and everything here that we're going to make it. But it's the people that live in these big centers that are on this huge push to, to, to drive out oil and gas that don't understand that it's, it's oil and gas right now that's really keeping them alive. And I don't want to put it to them that way, but that's such a sensitive subject and how do you get people to understand that well i'm going to keep trying to do it with a little bit of humor and uh and and some real life stuff to see what it takes to get you know farm farm to table kind of thing but it's kind of terrifying when you see the amount of things that are going on right now in the world where people are just trying to stomp out oil and gas like it needs to happen tomorrow we can phase away from it it's always going to be there to help support us maybe as a support system not as our primary but man So as you think about the people that are phasing it out, like in the United States, we just watched you can have a president one day that is supporting a pipeline, thousand jobs. Next day, it's all done. Yeah. Is that possible in in Canada as well? Do you have executive orders when (coughs) Trudeau were to get supported? you would you would call them now i mean i would want to consult somebody that's i mean obviously when you get into governmental hierarchy and a few different things there's a lot of very serious process sure. in it but from what i would understand is order and council and people passing things by way of regulation i believe is how it happens in canada here which is actually fantastically what happened with our gun ban uh, when it came through side note. <laughs> <laughs> i believe we talked about that before but um I think that's kind of what's really uh, is going to damage progress. Uh, You know, specifically when you see our big polarization between different political parties right now, where you have one that believes so far to the right side of what's going on here. And the other that believes so far on the left side of what's going on here is when you have like, say what, what happened in Canada, I wouldn't say we had a conservative government uh, before we had uh, our liberal government come in. So Stephen Harper before uh, Justin Trudeau came in, I wouldn't have said that that conservative government was as hard right as, as our now government is hard left kind of thing. Uh, but you're really starting to see these huge swings in what's going on. And I, I think that those swings are going to be the biggest thing that will damage countries other than anything is because you have a, a governmental party that comes in that is about to just start reversing. And I think you guys are starting to watch it now. And I'm kind of scared to see what's going to happen because you've had a government in that's quite hard, right? And now you have a government come in that is going to spend the next four years, basically reversing what that government's done to try and move things their way. Then what happens if that government changes again in the next four years, then instead of something kind of being somewhere generally in the center of what's going on to be good for a country you have a country that just starts being a big pendulum that doesn't spend enough time in the bottom getting done what they need to get done to, to keep progress happening. Like, does that make sense? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, and the only people that thrive in a pendulum swinging are, uh, are the oligarchs that get to the top, right? They're the, they're yeah. the people that are, that are like, Hey, I, it's either going to be my team or the other team that's in power. And we're just going to switch off. But the people in the middle that are getting wiped out by this pendulum, they, they yeah. have no, like, you know, a guy like me, I, I, I literally don't have time to pay attention to all of this, it, but it seems yeah. like, uh, yeah. it's, it's absolutely insane how much can change by one signature. I don't want to be in a place where that, where one person gets that much power and who does the only yeah. person that does is the person who's their guy in power. But the, the next day, if it's the other guy, then you don't want one person to have that power. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, I totally agree. And that's, and you're starting to see, uh, you're starting to see a lot of that happen in a lot of different countries, not just, you know, not just here in Canada or there in the U S right now, uh, in the country, uh, <clears throat> of Canada or the U S or anywhere in the world. I mean, it's, it's just, this is, it, it's, it's concerning for the simple fact that, uh, that we're just not showing progress with anything that we do now. It just seems to be one side just spends time dismantling what the other side has done. Um, and nobody's and, building anything together. It's like a, it's yeah. a sin. It's a mark of original sin. Yeah. If you work yeah. with the other side to build something. 
Yeah, it really is. And it like, I mean, I, I, I can't really attest to, to U.S. politics because to be honest, I, I, I don't follow U.S. politics very closely. Good, man. <laughs> I, I can't even keep up with Canadian ones nine times out of 10. Right. But I mean, if you look back into the days of, you know, our, our, our former governments, when you get back into the Cretchen days of the liberals and a few different things, I mean, you you didn't see this huge, huge pendulum. I mean, it was more you know, a liberal government that would kind of run closer to the center line and then a conservative government that would run a little bit closer to the center line kind of thing. But now you're like, it's, it's like that pendulum is starting to pick up some really big momentum and you can, and you can see it doing damage to a lot of the stuff. And it's, it's, it's pretty concerning. So do the people in Canada have as much, um, like right now there is a sense in the United States, whether you're on the left or the right, that you don't really like the media, that the, mm -hmm. the, the media seems to be like not on our team. And uh, is that going on in Canada yeah. as well? Yeah, it absolutely is. And I, and I uh, you know, I would, I would attribute most of that to social media. Um, and it, have you seen the documentary, The Social Dilemma? Uh, I'm familiar with it. I haven't actually watched the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I went through it and, it, and it's interesting. And, and if you watch what happens with your social media and some different things, I can see what they're saying. And um I just think that we're getting to an age where we're more tapped into what's happening more than any age of people has ever been. And that's, I think that's a dangerous thing in some situations because you get, uh, you get to the point where you can, you can find whatever you want on the internet to make you feel okay. Confirmation bias, right? You're just like, you can find it and you'd be like, I found this article that says what I believe. So I'm going to go with that kind of thing. And uh, I had a little bit of a reality check because I have a, a member within my family that that works in in renewables and, and a few other things. Um, and we get into some pretty interesting debates because we have different political views as well. But the difference between us versus anybody else that you'll ever debate with is we respect each other and we love each other. And we've always been taught since we were kids uh, that that you can sit down and have a conversation with somebody and you can respect the other person uh, that you're having the conversation with. You can respect their opinion and you owe them as much to listen to their opinion and where it's coming from as they do you to listen to your opinion and where it's coming from. And that's how that's how healthy conversations come about. And that's how healthy debates are built. And, uh, and that's where good solutions come from is when you can respect both sides. And I really feel like what I see a lot of the times, which I'm consciously trying to do better on, on my social media is, is not to immediately fight somebody that even comes fighting with at me or with a bad tone towards me is we need to calm down. And, and, and like I said, much, much earlier in, in the podcast here is, is you need to try and understand where that person's coming from and why they feel that way. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.